great to have Starbucks downstairs, hopped on the bus, headed off to HLH. So the next day we went to HLH prototyping and it was particularly of interest for me because we use prototyping services which really specialise in helping people get their prototypes out and then transition into larger scale production. So whilst we got to see a, a variety of uh, factories, our high end, low end and so on, I found HLH particularly interesting because they were, were catering more to people who are at the early stage of prototyping where you conceivably have a small run, maybe just a couple of, of items made, where they'd be handmade, hand moulded and they had high end equipment to give you a high quality finish even though you're doing a small run. So that's very exciting. The HLH was fantastic for me, this is probably one of my favourite days, really because we had the contrast with the day before with the plastics factory and the plastic factory really kind of overwhelmed me thinking oh my gosh plastics is, is impossible and then we went to HLH and and in their presentation they were talking about doing minimum orders of plastics and at one how is that possible I've just had all this information about plastics being really hard and the hard tooling taking such a long time how could you do a minimum order of one HLH is a what we call a prototyping house they specialize in short run complicated manufacturing processes that are really set up to help people validate ideas. Like the, the hacker space, I think we have opportunities to go out and, and do things for either local museums or, or libraries or other sorts of workshops and things where it'd be nice to turn up with something that you know, looks a little, a little bit better polished, better finished than some of our, our daggy efforts. Now, I, I love the daggy efforts, but I think some people aspire to do more than that and they're impressed with something that looks like it's you know, on the set of a movie. And so maybe HLH can help us get there. Uh, so HLH was an interesting place. So I've dealt with HLH remotely several times before. We've used them heaps for manufacturing parts and so on. So this is the first time I actually visually saw their outfit. We saw a range of different plastics manufacturing techniques, including some very low volume, like silicon mould. You might have only 20 to 50. HLH have such a wide range of skills, of different manufacturing techniques to help people realise their ideas at the fairly early stage and then through to full-scale manufacturing. The variety of stuff that they do there, they can do anything. So they specialise in plastic and a bit of uh, metal working, things like cars, parts of, the parts that go on cars. So when you go in through the front doors at HLH, they've got a quite a nice showroom, it's, it's all white and gleaming and there's glass cabinets and their glass cabinets are full of many of the items they've made. Large items like uh, car bumper bars, items that were you know, shiny like metallic finish on, on plastic. Some of the elements were had incredibly fine detail. And also it's quite a pleasant surprise to see it was a, a part that had been made for Black Magic, which is a local local company in Port Melbourne. With HLH, I was most surprised about the, the relatively small number of the volume of items that they were happy to produce. I'd had in, fixed in my head that unless I was making 10,000, no one would want to talk to me. HLH is very much a company that focuses on being able to deliver an MOQ of one to an MO, <laughs> MOQ of thousands. They will make 10 of these for you or 100 of them. And I think that's, in my own mind, opened up a lot of possibilities. With HLH, I was very interested in their services because they do more than just SLS printing. They can do a year prototype within a couple of days and I think it takes longer to ship it to us than it takes to make and they also deliver targeted services around rapid manufacturing. And seeing the sheer amount of CNC machines just for producing all the plastic and even metal components and just floors and floors of bigger and bigger machines was pretty incredible. You had a lot of facilities in one place and you could choose the best way, to, well they would help you choose the best way to do it for your particular needs. They're obviously more geared at prototyping in short runs. There was a big focus on the CNC side of things. Looking at just entire like levels of the building designated to that and seeing that array of drill bits so yeah really interesting for anything plastic working related so whatever your process needs might be then you can select the one that suits your budget basically we met with james and his assistant they were actually really nice people james was uh, with the co-founder of hlh it was it was also interesting to see a company that had part ownership from someone who's not Chinese. James is British and he's married to a Chinese woman so he speaks fluent Chinese and fluent English which has made it really easy to have a factory tour you know from him. And he's really into technology. And he was very enthusiastic and passionate and gave us great access to the factory and described all the processes. And he went through a lot of detail explaining what all the different lines were that were available to customers potentially to use to manufacture. You'd ask him a question and you'd go oh I you get straight down to the nitty gritty and tell you exactly how it all works, which is my kind of thing. I like explaining things to people. HLH had also recently moved factories, so they'd kind of gone from an old place to a new place, which gave the whole fit the place felt really new, which was cool. You've got a new product, you've designed it in CAD, but you can't make it for whatever reason. HLH is a place where you can go and say, oh, I need this part printed, but I only need one. And it's really complicated, 
and I don't have the skills to run the machine, and the machine's 50 grand, HLH is for you. That's an area of interest to me, and I think it's an area of interest to many pro makers, if you want to use that term. People that want to go beyond just making circuit boards for hobby use and making something that is like a finished retail product. One of the things with having James as a facilitator for the tour was that we were actually able to get a lot more insights into some of the processes. So they'll CNC machine you apart, they will 3D print you apart in a couple of different printing methods. Silicon vacuum moulding is another common technique of theirs where you can get a part that's almost realistically is as good as a high pressure injection moulded part except you get it in a silicon tool that doesn't cost you $50,000 to make. And in particular because HLH has the capability to rerun around rapid prototype tooling, we were able to look at some low-cost manufacturing options such as silicon mold and vacuum forming. It's a really, really valuable process for making short runs of high-quality parts. Surprisingly, I hadn't thought to use it ourselves. One of the things which was is a detractor for using injection molds is the cost of tooling. You can use a silicone mold with the right material, and you'll get a pretty good approximation to what your pro your final product would look like. The silicone molding is very good at getting detail. They used a process called vacuum casting to get an idea to kind of you only get a few products from it, but it's a really great way to prototype and just to see what your what your product would look like in real life. You could even go to market if you were doing a fairly small run of something like a high value or a specialised item. If you're making a thousand of something, you need to move to a different kind of technology. That was actually one of the most valuable things for the for the people on the tour because as we saw with the silicon moulds that was a, a mould tool that was quite accessible in terms of cost and could manufacture 20 to 30 components. The vacuum moulding was definitely a great way to get, get your prototype out and just do a, a quick test run see how if everything's working. That is a, a bit of an enabler so if you've got somebody who as a maker wants to take the product to the next level wants to make it look professional and they, they want someone to hold it feel it and, and use it without spending thousands on tooling you can get a really good facsimile of what you want. Seeing the silicon moulding process that it essentially gives you production quality parts just you can't run as many shots. And it's much more cost effective than setting up all the machinery for injection moulding. Silicon moulds are when you see them they're incredibly low tech it's basically a box with a, your work piece in it and you pour in some silicon and wait for it to go hard. Silicon mould is it's made out of a special silicon that's a, a two-part mixture it's not like a corking gun for sealing up your bathroom where you just squirt it out. It's one part and it just cures in air. Yeah. These are two component mixtures and it's not a gel, it's a liquid. A very, very viscous liquid. So you generally, you would print the part you actually want as a, a master body and you suspend that in a big tub and then you just pour the silicon in and you end up with your part encapsulated in a big blob of silicon and then you cut it in half and take out the 3D printed part and you're left with the cavity of the part you want to make. And then use that as the tool for injection moulding. And then you can do additional things where you drill holes in it and you set pins in it which will help you put the mold back together if you've got to make lots of parts and once you take out the 3d printed master part you can then close the mold back up bit a release agent so the goop doesn't stick back to the silicon and then you load it into a vacuum chamber and you vacuum inject a resin the same way the silicon's a two-part mixture you can get uh, urethanes and epoxies with all sorts of properties anything from rock hard down to a nice soft rubber and you can inject this as a liquid component under vacuum and it will fill your fill the cavity back up of the mold exactly to the 3D printed part you made and then you let that cure add a bit of heat and then you take it apart and here you've got your part not in a brittle 3D printed material but now in a nice hard epoxy or urethane or whatever you, whatever material grade you need it and you can even do uh, optically clear parts so a lot of front headlamp assemblies for cars are done like this where they've got to be smooth polished both sides and you get optical clear parts straight out first time. So it's not something that really lasts very long. The silicon itself starts to degrade so you can make maybe a dozen pieces up to 30 pieces I think out of a silicon mold so you can't use it for very large volume production but it's fantastic for prototyping and for special small run parts. It's a labour intensive process but even so when it's done in a relatively low cost labour country like China still is at the moment it's still a, a, an attractive proposition for people who are making 10 of something. At a certain volume it certainly makes sense to go to a metal tool but rather than spending say five or ten thousand dollars on having a tool made there is a certain point where it makes sense to just keep making silicon moulds even if you can only get 10 or 20 parts out of each mould you can make lots of moulds you can just keep making them so what that allows is a scale to ramp up quite gradually. You don't necessarily have to start with a large volume of production. 
you can start small and then grow it as you go. And it's kind of interesting seeing all the different parts that can be produced by this one technique. We saw the robots being made there. <laughs> so one thing we saw was manufacturing of some fairly large entertainment robots. I think they were butlers. The interesting thing about the silicon mold tool was the scale of the components that it could build. And they were quite large, one and a half meters tall or something. So there were some reasonably large parts that were made. So we actually saw sort of molds of, of, of quite large components that were in effect sort of robots down to quite small parts. Whilst we were there, they were making molds for what looked like, be like a bit like a robot shell. It wasn't clear what level of automation it might have, whether it was just a static prop or something that was more dynamic, but certainly inside around the neck and head had quite a sophisticated mechanism of metal mounts and, and like gearing to allow the head to move so it's clear they could do you know, something more sophisticated than just doing doing molds. So I don't know if they were making more than the 20 to 30 but let's say they wanted to make 50 it's still not enough to warrant making injection molds especially of that size they would be massively expensive. They required a fair bit of hand finishing but it was a very quick way of getting medium you know well, relatively low volume products through to market. You might guess between 10 and 20 shots before the tool starts to become a little bit unusable, at which point you need to make another one. You can make another one. If you're going to make lots and lots of something, though, that's not the way you would do it. But if you're making 10 to show as uh, to investors as prototypes, then that would be ideal. Really good value. As you walk around, they walk through their showroom and see all the amazing parts they've built for things. And you can start to see, oh, this one was made like this, that one was made like this. Oh, James, how did you make this part? And you come over and say, oh, that one was selective laser sintered. So that's a, a bed of powder that you weld together with lasers. It's just awesome technology. It's, it's a service I can definitely see myself using in the future. I think a number of us were quite interested to to see if we could actually get a project up to use HLH. I would have no hesitation in contacting HLH about prototyping servers. In fact, I already plan to. In fact, I think one of the two people already uses HLH to, uh, to manufacture.